So coming from the food world, I always like to look at things through the lens of food. And when I think about the ingredients that help me find my true passion, I think about what UBC gave me through my experience. And I think of these experiences as experiences that knock the wind out of you. And then it's the way you form your attitude and the way that you basically come back from these experiences and have the right attitude. So coming out of, uh, of, um, of university, basically, I, well, sorry, out of high school, Getting rejected was not a rare thing at the high school dance, but I'd never really been professionally rejected. And Sato gave me the wake up call that, well, you have to be a leader, not just in video games and sports, but you've gotta get involved. So I get involved, and it was 2008, not quite the Trump era, but it was also a depressing time, and I completely blocked out. I also got hit with uh, crippling anxiety, and I remember being completely blocked out. And it was a time where I couldn't even read a textbook before being overwhelmed. And that was a big problem. And at that time, the only bright light that was there were these beautiful faces. And three weeks before my final exams, I managed to snap out of it and put my game face on and pass my exams. And I realized that resilience and family were things that I had all along, but I didn't really appreciate them. So I came back. And not just, just a sense of confidence, a newfound confidence, but also I had gratitude. And when you mix those two things together, you really are capable of doing things you didn't think were possible. So I went from being bedridden to campaigning in front of 100 people a day and getting elected for student government. And that's when I discovered my love and passion for leadership and public speaking. I also love food. Food is great. And I had a professor in Com 101 who taught us to think a little bit outside of the box. He actually implored us to go find a job at a random place that is not listing the job. You have to pitch yourself. So I convinced this lovely couple they needed a 20-year-old marketing manager. At this point, it became pretty obvious that most learning happens outside of the classroom. But how do I take my passion for food and my passion for leadership to the next level? Well, I had to go way beyond the classroom. I mean, like, to a different continent. So the next thing that UBC gifted to me was I went to exchange to Barcelona. And that was an experience that taught me to slow down and be present. And it took me this long to realize that because only a city like Barcelona with their very vibrant culture immediately sucks me out of my phone and makes me live in the moment. And at the time I was at a school called Asade and they actually gave me the opportunity to actually merge my newfound passion with an actual commercial product. So we, we thought of it like a tango dance, where you're dancing with your partner, you're moving to the same rhythm, and we made these silicone wristbands, and that actually was the beginning of what tango is today. Now, the dots started to connect pretty quickly. I came back to UBC, and uh, two of my fraternity brothers connected me to a small publication at the time called Van City Buzz, and they were also working on an initiative to get people to be more present with each other, but their idea was more around immersing people around food culture. So I said, okay, well, let's do it. I was just about to graduate, and the first concept we thought about was a progressive dinner. And um, I remember being like, ah, do I go for a full-time job? Do I do the entrepreneurial thing? We got a feature on Global two months as the project started. So I knew that uh, I was in for a ride, and I think my answer was there. Fast forward 18 months later, this is us. 24 hours before pitching 300 investors on why our product was worth their investment. Just like when you cram for those midterm exams and you realize you're fully not ready for them, that's kind of what we felt like. So we actually crammed all night, realized our business model had to evolve, and we pivoted. And basically we pivoted to an app that finds food for your mood. And yeah, it was something that made a lot of sense at the time, and we <laughs> miraculously actually won demo day. It felt like an A+, plus, which I knew I didn't deserve. But we did it, and now the next challenge was, how do we build an app? And that takes a long time. At the same moment as a way to you know, kill time, we auditioned for Dragon's Den, which is happening at that same period. And they actually accepted us to pitch in T-minus two months. So we're like, wow, how are we going to practice in two months? Well, we went back to Sauter, and we pitched in front of classrooms of students who I will tell you now were far more ferocious than the Dragons. When it came to game day, we pitched, we put on a heck of a show, but we came back empty-handed. By this point, I was 
virtually immune to the feeling of failure. I said, you know what? If we figured it out before, we're gonna figure it out now. So we actually went our own way, raised more money at a better valuation, and we even got a dragon to invest in us in the end. But of course, as the theme follows, we ran out of money, and most of my team left, and I, f I found myself going back to UBC to get some free office space. And this new center just opened up, and, and, and this was actually a true game saver for us, because while we were here, it changed the game. These are Instagram influencers. These are a new breed of students that were basically taking photos of their food and financing their meals. And I'm like, wow, like this is crazy. They're amassing thousands of followers. How do we work alongside them? So after a bit of you know, more pivoting and, and thinking of our next uh, business plan, we started to pivot into what we are today. And we started to actually hire a lot of these brilliant storytellers and we work with them to create campaigns for national food brands and restaurants across the country. So it's pretty amazing how it's all sort of evolved over time. And throughout this time, you know, I haven't learned it all, but I've been through enough stuff to realize what's gonna blindside you in business. And I was thinking, man, if only I was in high school and I could even just get a taste of what's to come, wouldn't that make the world a bit more of a productive place? So I started life school. And uh, I, we find very innovative ways to throw them into real life experiences. So whether it be my students at life school or my team at Tangu, I always lead to the ingredients that UBC taught me. And that's to be present, be resilient, be adaptable, and keep the people closest to you close. And that's the way that you tap into your true passions. And that's the way that you connect your true passions to a career that is fulfilling and that brings you infinite happiness. Thank you.